G'day Internet and welcome back to another video. And the first part of my video is celebrating Septandy. Now let me explain Septandy for a minute. There was a few of us on YouTube chatting away and we came to the realisation that for every Apple or Mac or Commodore 64 or Amiga video or whatever on YouTube, Tandy seems to get a little less love. So for the month of September, we're going to fix that. So myself, along with Adrian Black, Akabuku and Dave Just Dave, we're going to dedicate September to a series of videos on Tandy. And for my part, I'm going to be restoring this TRS-80 Model 1. So let's take a look. This is a Radio Shack Tandy TRS-80. But not just anyone, it's actually a fairly early one. You notice there's no numpad, and if we flip it over, it has a fairly early serial number. I think it's A000190, uh, with a catalogue number of 261001D. Now, I'm not sure what the D for, but 261001, at least, is for the original 1977 Level 1 4K model. But that's all fine and dandy. I can't actually do anything with this at the moment, primarily because I don't have a power supply. But we can fix that. Thanks to Ian Marvick, I have the PCB and the required components to build come on, a modern power supply. There's the PCB. There's all the... Uh, passive components, we've got a thumping huge capacitor, we've got a rectifier, some connectors, some uh, fuse holders, a fuse and an LED. And so this is what, you, if, you, if you go to Eden and buy this, this is what you get. The reason being is because obviously some people have uh, 110 volt mains and other have 240 and I'm obviously in 240 land. So then you go to Mouser or RS or whatever and you buy two transformers like that. Um, and so the DC one is the 70060K, which is that one, and the AC one is the 70061K, which is that one, and they go straight onto the PCB like that. So how about we put this together? Righto, so we're all hooked up, uh, everything's here. Now, make no mistake, that is 240 volts AC just sitting there, so yes, I'm being very careful. Uh, but we do have an LED on, so that's a good start. All right, let's see how we go. Aha! We have life! It says, ready! Righto. Okay, that's something. So now that we know it actually works, we kind of need to put it in something because, well, this isn't very safe, obviously, but also it's not very neat either. So I found a Jiffy box, a fairly standard large size one. I'll put the 
dimensions uh, at JCAR. But the thing is with this, is this PCB is actually designed to go into the TRS-80 expansion box. And it's actually got enough grunt to run both the, the TRS-80 and the expansion box. But I don't have one of those. So I need to come up with a way of neatly mounting this and then also putting it in a box. So I designed this. This is just a 3D printed frame. And the idea is that this kind of sits in there like that. It locks down with these uh, couple of bits here uh, and then it goes in the box. So what we need to do is this needs to be super glued into there like that. So let's start by doing that bit. That's in there nice and tight. I like that. Uh, let me just remove these just to make life a little easier. These are just some little clips because it helps it hold the whole thing in place. Now, this slides into the bottom ridge just along the bottom. And if we swing it around, these should with a little bit of manoeuvring should now clamp down onto this except they want to just keep spinning so let me grab a pair of pliers to hold them in place All right, that's better. That needs to go to that edge there because it was actually pushing up against the side of the transformers. Right, so as you've probably guessed, I've actually pulled the LED and disconnected the uh, mains wire because this obviously now goes on there like that, but we need some holes for power, a power switch, and an LED. Now, I've already... Oh, come on. I've already marked some out. I don't know if you can see it because it's done in pencil, but uh, we've got um, the power out, we've got LED, and we've got switch, which is actually switched to mains, uh, and we've got the actual mains in. Now, um, that's a 12 mil hole, that I think is a 6 mil hole, and the power in and power out. Uh, 10 mil holes and I'm going to put because I'm going to put some grommets in so let's get started with that we're obviously going to start with some uh, pilot holes Grab my 10 mil drill bit. Actually, I think I might go one size. I might go up to a, a six mil and then drill the 10 mil ones. Okay, with holes drilled, we can now start mounting some things. Um, let's start by... Uh, let's just start by arguing with the grommets, because I know they're going to be a pain in the ass.
grommets are wrestled in. Uh, next, let's put our switch in. And finally, our LED. Okay, there we go. So, the way this is kind of set up is, because we don't have much, we've only got certain bits of clearance, that will kind of go on like that and should still fit. Yes, good. All right. So, what we want to do now is let's, well, we can feed the line that goes to the actual computer through in theory. I hope I've made this big enough. One, two, three, four, jam you through and come on, please be big enough. All right, good. Okay, so that's that. And now our main power, which is over here. Now, what I've done to this is I have already wired in um, the wires for the switch. So if we start by feeding these through, then we get to this. There's a bit of a join, and hopefully I can get that. Yes, good. And then the main power. So these two obviously go to the PCB, and these two go to the power switch. So let me solder up and the actual power switch. Right, that's in. So, what we should be able to do now is position this in such a way that, let's just get those out of the way. I should now be able to solder these back to the PCB again. And the last thing I want to do is Oh, we still need to go and just for some safety's sake these are massively too long but they're nice and thick I'm going to add some strain relief zip tie style strain relief on the inside of these cables so I want that on there fairly tight and then we just snip off the massive amount of excess same with the mains power let's just bring it in a bit because zip ties solve all Right, so we should be able to now pull these in, keep everything nicely tucked away. Oh, whoops, I need to plug in the LED. That would have been annoying. Um, okay, that's positive. That's negative and keeping everything inside the box yes that includes you that should now mount like that and we should be able to put some screws in the bottom i think these are the screws otherwise i've lost the original ones well
And just for a finishing touch on the bottom, let's put some feet on it. Even though I've already managed to scratch up the bottom pretty well already in the process of making this. Righto, there you go, one power supply. It actually turned out pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the big trick is, let me plug it in somewhere. And in theory, Okay, LED slowly going out and on. Nice. I'm guessing there's that's the residual power being held in the capacitor. That's why it goes do. That's pretty cool. And for one last finishing touch, we have this with my little guide, and we put that there. Perfect. So I think we'll leave part one there. We've got a working power supply and the machine for all intents and purposes seemed to work. I've even managed to get Time Trek loaded from cassette. Um, the next thing we're going to tackle in part two is going to be the keyboard. I've still got a bunch of stuck keys and um, the ribbon cable and stuff is still a bit, uh, a bit iffy. So uh, we'll tackle that in part two. But for now, thanks for watching.